Praise the Lord. Prayer. It's a broad topic. Many of us do it all the time. In the morning, we wake up, we pray. We have breakfast, we pray. On our home, on our way home from work, we pray. We go to bed, we pray. Many of us do it all the time. Sometimes our prayers become repetitive. Since we do it so much, we just stop saying our prayers with meaning. They stop coming from our hearts and just start coming from habit. We for, others forget about prayer altogether. I want us to open up to Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all under all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Jesus Christ. It says, do not be anxious about anything. Do not worry. Why do we not have to worry? Because God, he will be there for us. He will have our backs. Instead of worrying, he says, pray with petition and thanksgiving. Then he says, the peace of God will transcend all understanding, will guard our, will guard our hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. So the peace of God, which surpasses all of our human understanding, we have no idea how his life works, his peace. He will guard us with it. He will give, give his protection over us with his peace. And any request that we have to God, present it to him. He will help us in our time of needs, no matter where we are in situation. This leads us to the next passage, James 5, 15. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with the oil in the name of the Lord. And, and the prayer offered in, the, in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly and it would not rain. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. God is telling us over and over again to pray. If anyone's in trouble, pray. If anyone is sick, just pray. But he also says to sing songs of praise. Prayer is not just asking him to do stuff for us. We also have to be thankful to him for all the stuff that he does give us. So we sing these songs of praise to praise him, the creator of everything. And and it says in verse 15, And the prayer offered in faith will make the per sick person well. The Lord will raise them up if they have sinned, and they will be forgiven. He forgives our sins. We don't even have to ask him. But by our prayers, he will forgive us and heal the sick person, whoever has troubles with anything, he will heal them. Elijah also, human being just like us. He prayed just like us, but he prayed earnestly that it would not rain in his time, and it did not rain in the land for three and a half years. These prayers, we say in the same exact prayers. But a 
Elijah, he had faith. Our faith, if there's any doubt in it, it will not happen. Because our doubt overcomes whatever faith we have. We need to be faithful in whatever we do. And our righteousness, or it says, the prayer of righteous is faithful. The, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Our righteousness, it doesn't come from us, because we cannot be righteous. We are born into a sinful world. So our righteousness comes from Jesus Christ. He is the perfect one where we get our righteousness from and through him only. So through him, our prayers are powerful and effective for whatever reason we're praying for. And in James 4, 2, it says, You desire, but you do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. Many of us are always saying, we don't have this, we don't have this. So God is saying, we don't have it because we're not asking him for anything useful that will bring us closer to God. We're not asking him for it. But so prayer, if we're in trouble, we pray to him. But even the disciples, they ask God to teach them how to pray. Pray. So in Luke 11, one day Jesus was praying at a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as, just as John taught his disciples. So, Jesus was praying, but only after the prayer, the disciples came up to him because they saw that he knew how to pray. They wanted to learn to pray just like him. And when you go up to someone, ask them to teach you something, you, go, you don't ask them to teach you something that they don't know how to do. You ask them something that they're good at, something, they're, something that they're good at, like a profession. That's what you ask them to teach you. So they asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. So Jesus was good at praying. He knew how to do it. So he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. So, the apostles, the first word they hear from him, Father. Why would they call God a Father? They didn't know that until before then. They were blown away that you have to call God, creator of everything, that he's their Father. So then, Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at the middle, at midnight, and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine is on a journey, has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he, was not, he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, Yet because of your sham, shameless audacity, he will surely give up, get up and give you as much as you need. Here Jesus is saying that even when it's midnight, even when everyone's asleep doing nothing, just sleeping, God says, ask and you will be given. Keep asking and God will give to you. He doesn't say just ask once. If you go to this friend at night and you ask him once, could you give me three loaves of bread? He, he said, no, me and my children are already in bed. So 
this person, he had to go ask multiple times. Then finally, he got up and gave him the bread as much as he needed. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receive, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. It's simple. If we ask, he will answer us. Because he won't let us down. He loves us. And he likes to constantly hear from his children. And the way he hears from us is through prayer, with communication to him. So in Isaiah 52, 6 to 7, Sixty-two, six to seven. I have posted watchmen on your walls, Jerusalem. They will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord, give yourself no rest, and give him no rest till he establishes Jerusalem and make her the praise of the earth. God is saying, Give yourselves no rest to give him, God, no rest. We have to constantly, constantly be in prayer to him. Because he likes, if a father hears a child only once a day, there's, there's a weak relationship between them. So God says to constantly ask him, give ourselves no rest to give him no rest. So that he will establish his established Jerusalem but prayer isn't something that you only do when you need something because we always ask him to do stuff but we need to also have prayers of thankfulness and praise so in Colossians 4 2 says devote yourselves to prayer be watchful and thankful and pray for us too that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ as for I am in chains as for which I for which I am in chains so we have to be devoted to prayer watchful and thankful we have to put our own effort into prayer because prayer isn't just us praying. If there's a canoe and you have two oars, one of them is prayer, one of them is effort. If you only use one of them, prayer, you'll only go in one circle. Or only effort without prayer, you'll only go in another circle. But if you have effort and you pray about it and you do all these things, then you will get places. So... It also says, be, being watchful and thankful. Our prayers shouldn't be just asking him to do stuff. We need to be thankful to him too for the stuff that he does, even the stuff we don't ask. That we have shelter, we have food every day we wake up. And there are tons more stuff that we have to be thankful for. So we need to thank our God just as much, if not more, then we ask him to do stuff. In Matthew 6, 5. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what, you, what is done in secret, will reward you. So, our prayers, 
We shouldn't just pray, go out in front of everyone, be like, be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners so that everyone sees them. So they think that they're good Christians. We need to pray in our own, privately, with God, to have that relationship. We need to go into our own rooms, lock the door, and have a personal prayer with Him. A more personal relationship. Because prayer is what builds our relationship with Him. Then, when you have this constant relationship, then you get to see His work in your life. You will always be with Him. And you will feel His presence with you every day. You will talk to Him. He will talk to you. You will feel Him lifting you up. And through all your problems, He will carry you. No matter what that problem is. But even if you don't have a relationship with Him, He still loves you. Like a son or daughter. Because we are His children. Like a father loves his kids, his children, he will always want to have that relationship with you. He's just waiting for you to accept him into your life. Amen.